Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial and welcome to episode 8. So this time we are going to work with layering, so we'll sort our clipping of our weapon out and we'll also look at commanding our axe to swing whenever we press the correct button. So let's start with layers. Now layers are a way, that in this case, that we can provide an extra camera to render a certain layer so as we do not clip our weapon into objects. And the way that works is if we go to our weapon, which is currently on our FPS controller and FPS character, axe object. So if we add this to a separate layer, we can render just this on one camera. So to do that, what we do is up here in layer, let's click on default and then add layer. And then whatever layer you would want to use, let's say layer 10, I'm going to call this one weapons. Hit enter. And if we click off it again and click back on our axe, we'll be able to add that layer. So click default again and click on weapons. And then yes, change children. So everything within this object is now called weapons as the layer. So to do this now, what we need to do is tell our camera not to render that layer. So if we go on first person character, we have our camera as a component. And what we do now is we change the culling mask. So here we need to click on everything and then untick weapons. And we should see on our camera preview that the weapon disappears. And the weapon obviously is still there. It's not disappeared forever. And hopefully you guys can probably see what's going to happen here. If we right click on our first person character and then click down here to camera, we'll render another camera and you'll see this appear. So we need to do the inverse of what we've just done. So clear flags up here, click on depth only. Now the reason we do that is because we don't really need to render everything as it were. We don't need the skybox and all that rubbish. So we need depth only and then we change culling mask from everything to nothing and then click nothing and just click weapons. So what's happening here is this camera that we have here will only render whatever is in the weapons layer, which is obviously quite handy. One extra thing we have to do now is if we click up here and click on debug, we'll be presented with slightly different options. Now, generally they are the same, but debug can offer a couple of extra, uh, you know, things for us to kind of play around with. Specifically, this one, depth. So if you hover over it, it will give you a little note, which says a camera with a larger depth is drawn on top of a camera with a smaller depth. So in this case, we need it to be on top of our original camera. So if we put something like 80 in there, or you know something high at least like that, it'll render on top. So hopefully, if we press play now, we should be able to see our camera is rendering. Well, if it actually plays. Don't freeze on me, Unity. Don't do this to me, man. There we go. So our weapon is there, and hopefully, there is no clipping. So that is a good example of how layers can work. They layer, in this case, a camera on top of a, the other camera, so as this never clips into anything, it will always be on top. Very handy. So any other weapons that we create in the future need to use the same process that we've used here. Just name it layer as weapons. So let's rename this camera. So right click and rename weapon cam. Okay, so next thing we need to do is let's bring in a sound effect because we want a swoopy noise when we swing the axe. So let's go to our audio effects folder and I have this nice little swing axe sound. And if you want it, uh, it's on the website, head over there, downloads and assets. Same with the script that we're going to write. If you have any problems, download it over there for free. So let's write a script which will allow us to swing the sword. Well, firstly, let's set um, our inspector panel back to normal. Oh, and you can see right there, there's a good example of what this camera is rendering, just the weapon. So in our scripts folder down here, we need to create a script which will swing the sword. So right click, create C-sharp script. 
And let's call this Axe Swing. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to do something a little different than what we've done previously. This script is going to be a little bit more in depth because there's going to be a case of waiting for a certain situation before we can repeat a process. So to do that, we're going to use something called iEnumerator. And it's a coroutine and we have to use that because we have to control time itself to not allow ourselves to repeat the swing action. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a lot of trouble because you don't want to swing this axe and then be able to just keep swing, 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 because that just wouldn't quite be right, would it? So as we can see here, Visual Studio is taking too long to load, far too long to load. I'm not quite sure why. It's early morning, I guess. It's still taking a while. Okay, so I'll quickly explain that a little more in I Enumerator. We're going to be able to use uh, something called yield wait for seconds. And what that will do is allow ourselves to wait within the script before we can actually do something. And it's very handy, but the problem is we've only used void methods and we can't use yield in a void method. So let's get started with this script. Now, first things first, what we need to do is declare just a couple of variables. So I'm going to get rid of any annotations and void start. Don't need them. And we're going to have public game object and we'll call it the axe semicolon and public. I'm going to use a bool and a bool is a way of telling us whether something is true or false, i.e. Is this condition true or is it false? So we'll call it is swinging semicolon. Now, to do this exactly right, we have to make sure that we have our keys set up right in Unity, which means us going back into the engine, go to edit, go to project settings, and then input. And we've done this before with action, if you remember. I'm sure we did it with the uh, gem. So we're going to use fire one. So if we click on fire one up here, you can see that we're going to use the left mouse button here. So we have to remember the name fire one. So back to our script. And if we go to our collect gem script, we're going to use almost the same sort of situation here, but not in the same sense because we're not going to have on mouse over. We just need to have this certain section of uh, if get button down as it were. So in void update, if input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes fire one quote close bracket close bracket open curly bracket then we need to instantly change is swinging to true semicolon which means up here in our variable declaration, we need to put by default is swinging is equal to false. So we've set this to true, so we can't repeat the process. But what we do need to do is then start the coroutine, as I say, which is that I enumerator. And we can call it anything we want. So start coroutine and in brackets, let's call it swing the axe open close bracket close bracket semicolon now at this point it will underline red because we haven't actually created this coroutine yet so we need to make the sound and we need to animate and then we need to wait for a certain time before the animation resets so because we're using a sound effect we need to go public audio source and swing sound semicolon so what we do now is we ignore the void update and go below and we go i enumerator and it's called swing the axe open close bracket open curly bracket and within here now let's firstly play that swing sound so swing sound dot play open close bracket semicolon and next let's play the animation to swing 
And if we go to our axe object, and it's literally swing axe. So to get that animation to play, we need to type the the axe dot get component, and in spiky brackets animation because that is the name of the component that we're referencing at this point. Open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of that animation. So mine was swing axe. If yours is named something different, make sure you put the exact name here with the correct capitalization. Remember, coding is always case sensitive. So you always need to remember your capitals and your lowercase and then you know, you, otherwise you're gonna end up with a crazy script that probably isn't gonna work. So quote, close bracket, semicolon. So at this point, what's happening is we're playing the sound and swinging the axe at the same time. And let's check how long that our animation was running for. So if we click on swing axe and it runs for uh, how many frames is it? 30, yeah, 30 frames, so 0 0.5 seconds. So at this point we have to go yield, return, new, wait for seconds and in brackets you put that 0 0.5 however i'm going to wait for just a fraction of a second longer just so as it doesn't seem unnatural so i'm going to have 0 0.55 and f we need the f because it's a float it's a decimal number if it was a whole number that you were waiting for you wouldn't need anything after that if you're waiting for a second it'd just be that one so close bracket semicolon and then after all that's done all is said and done. We have the swinging, we have the sound. We then need to change is swinging back to false so we can reinitiate the whole process. So is swinging equals false, semicolon, and save. So this should allow us to swing that weapon on command whenever we press our left mouse button. So let's attach that to, in fact, let's attach it to the axe object, or should we attach, no. Let's attach it to a separate object which will allow us to control all of our weapons within the game because we're going to add more, obviously. So game object, create empty. And let's F2 and rename weapon control. So let's add that script to it, which was axe swing. And let's set those two variables. The axe is obviously axe object. Swing sound, we need to add that in. So on our sounds object here, and effects, let's hold control, press D on ding 001, F2 to rename, axe swing. And then let's drag and drop that axe swing into the audio clip. And obviously remember, we don't need play on awake, we don't need loop, we don't need any of that. All unticked, just the axe swing. And let's then add that to the variable over here and then press play, and then let's check this out. There we go. So, right, so I've noticed we need to add in an extra line. What we need to do is, I did notice then, I'll see if you guys can notice as well. I tried to click quite a few times and you can see that the animation plays fine, but we can hear the uh, sound, which means that the script itself isn't quite working properly. And what we'll need to do is modify this if statement to contain an and. So we need two conditions to be met. So after fire one with the close bracket there, we need to put two ampersands. This means and is swinging equals false. So this is a great example to show that uh, is swinging should be equal to false. So it's come up with an error. Why have you come up with an error? Have I typed that right? Uh, so if I'm putting get uh, fire one and is swinging equals false. Oh, and it's still not doing it. Okay. We'll try something. We'll come back to that some other time. Um, that's my fault. Uh, so we'll have that. 
Uh, we'll save that, and what we'll do is we'll nest it. So nesting is a way of creating different uh, conditions within certain if statements. We'll come back to and probably next time. I'm not sure why that underline there, but if you know, let me know in the comments, but we'll probably do it next episode anyway. Uh, so what we'll do is after we have this if statement, we'll go if is swinging. In fact, I know what it was. <laughs> It was because we didn't do the double equals. So we'll do two different ways here. So if is swinging equals false, open curly bracket, and then we put these conditions, these two lines within there, and save. So what we're going to do is do this two different ways, and it will produce the same result. So if we press play now, shouldn't get any errors. Perfect. And let's press play, and we should be able to swing only once. There we go. So two conditions have to be met before these two lines of code work. So let's do the other one. So let, I'm going to hold control, press Z to undo all of that. So that's nesting. If you want to nest it that way, that's fine. And what we'll do is in if input dot get button down fire one after the first close bracket, two ampersands, which means and, and is swinging equals, and that's double equals, false. So two conditions again have to be met before these two lines of code can be used. So I'm going to save that and we're going to use this one. Like I say, if you want to use nesting, that's fine. If you want to do it this way, that's completely fine. You come up with the same result anyway. So let's press play and check our same result. Perfect. So you can see here that the process of scripting and everything that we do within the script is a great way of controlling what we do. And we'll probably do it a lot more uh, in future episodes because being able to control things is it, it's quite important. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some uh, win zones. Um, we'll probably take a start looking at maybe some effects and possibly a skybox as well to just make things look a little bit better. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.